You know, sometimes I wonder if Mercury used to be something completely different billions of years ago. Was it something else? Let's actually find out in this video. Welcome to What The Math. And so here I was reading a few papers about uh, various crater distribution. And of course, I'm talking about these little spots, the crater spots on Mercury in comparison to the moon. So if you actually take a look at both, and actually, let's take a look at three different objects. I'm going to uh, take Mercury and also put Mars and the moon in uh, in a triple orbit so that you can all actually see all of them. And now we're going to go to charts and just take a look at all three. So these are the three objects we uh, have actually taken a lot of photos of. And we have lots of really uh, good high definition photos showing all of the craters. Now, on Mars, as you can kind of see... Uh, there aren't that many craters compared to Mercury that's right there. Uh, there's some really large ones. There's a few craters here and there. But what this shows us is that um, basically craters indicate how old the surface is. And in this case, it shows us that something happened on Mars that removed some of the craters. And today we think that Mars may have actually had um, quite a thick atmosphere and possibly also was geologically active, had volcanoes and... Uh, possibly even plate tectonics like we have on Earth today. And over that period of time, some of the craters were removed, except, of course, for some of the more larger ones. And then if you look, take a look at Mercury and also take a look at Moon, you'll notice that they both have quite a lot of craters. Now, this obviously indicates to us that the surface here is quite old. Uh, some of the craters were made many, many billion years uh, ago. Specifically here, we're talking about a period known as late heavy bombardment, which occurred about 3.8 billion years ago. And this is why there is so many craters on both of these objects. But there is actually a paper that I'm posting in the link below that shows you specifically uh, a very, very detailed comparison between the craters on both of these objects. And what this paper discovers is, and actually doesn't analyze this very thoroughly, I personally think, but what it discovers is that the moon actually has more craters than Mercury. As a matter of fact, uh, the discovery is quite significant, I think, because, well, first of all, they find that in terms of large craters, very large craters, both Moon and Mercury have relatively the same number. In terms of small craters, very, very tiny craters, like, I don't know, you can't even see them, actually, um, they both have the same number. But medium craters, between 20 and 120 kilometers, this object has a lot more than this object. And to me, this is actually really important. First of all, this indicates that Despite larger surface area and despite larger mass, uh, so here if we actually compare masses, Mercury is about 4.5 times the mass of the Moon, so it obviously has more gravitational attraction, more um, chances for attracting asteroids and collisions. So it should technically, assuming that the surface of this object is older or the same age, have more, uh, more craters. And the other thing is that we know that the moon was actually not formed with the rest of the solar system. It was formed sometime later during the collision with uh, a proto-Earth. And so here, the, there was a video I, uh, I made a few months ago that explained the formation of the moon. And we know that the moon probably formed about 100 to maybe 200 million years after the formation of the solar system. And so it's actually a little bit younger than Mercury and it should have less craters than Mercury. So there are three reasons here, obviously. First reason is the surface size. Second reason is the gravitational attraction. And third reason is the fact that it should technically be younger. So what is going on here? And if you actually read this paper, what it shows you is that number of craters on the moon is about 5,185. Number of craters on Mercury in total is about 4,924. And that's actually kind of interesting. And so despite the same number of large craters and despite the same number of small craters, which probably came in later, um, the medium craters on this planet are lacking compared to the moon. Now, one explanation for this is obviously that maybe, just maybe, Mercury had some kind of a tectonic process or volcanic process that kind of covered up some of those um, craters and some of them may have disappeared with time. Or maybe some larger craters covered some of the smaller ones or some of the medium ones. And that's, of course, quite a good explanation, but nevertheless, uh, I mean, this could have happened on, on the moon. And as a matter of fact, it did happen, like right, right here, there's an area that is lacking craters completely. So still, we're back to the same question. Why does the moon have more craters? 
Another explanation, of course, is that maybe during the late heavy bombardment 3.8 billion years ago, uh, medium-sized rocks um, that would create uh, medium-sized craters didn't actually reach Mercury. Maybe they were all, all kind of captured by the Moon, by the Earth, by Venus, but never really made it to Mercury because uh, we think that most of them came from the asteroid belt that's located kind of in this region between Mars and Jupiter. And we think that during the migration of the gas giants, something disturbed the uh, uh, the asteroid belt and some some of the rocks made made their way toward Venus, toward Earth, toward Mars, and toward Mercury. So that's of course possible, but there are still a few questions that are kind of unanswered. So one of the questions is this: Mercury is actually a very very dense object. As a matter of fact, if you look at density here, its density is almost the same. And here here's the density. It's almost the same as Earth. As a matter of fact, if it actually was more massive, if it was, if it had a little bit more mass, it would be way, way more dense than Earth. So uh, density on Earth is 5.51, density on Mercury is 5.43. And the reason why it's so dense is because it has a very, very large iron core. As a matter of fact, it has a lot more iron in comparison to silicates uh, than does Earth. So Earth only has about 25% um, of iron, whereas on Mercury, we think there's approximately 46%. So in a sense, uh, to me at least, this kind of looks like some kind of a core of something else. And this is where I'm going to go with my next hypothesis that I'm about to present to you. So we know that this is a very dense object that kind of doesn't really make sense. We don't really know where iron came from. And uh, the other thing we don't really understand is why uh, there is actually less craters here, so meaning that possibly the surface is a little bit younger than the surface of the moon. So anywhere between 4 billion years old, so anywhere between 4.5 or 4.4 billion years old to approximately 3.8 billion years old, which is when we think Mars uh, lost its atmosphere and when it started to receive these permanent um, asteroid craters. So um, it's anywhere between that range. And so what was Mercury before that? What was Mercury right after the formation of the solar system? And so the hypothesis here is that maybe, just maybe Mercury actually did had, have atmosphere and not just any atmosphere. It may have actually had very, very thick atmosphere right after the formation of the solar system. Now, this is a hypothesis that sort of explains a few things, but also raises a few questions. One of the things that it explains is the fact that um, we don't really seem to have any kind of gas giant-like planets um, in our inner solar system. Planets that we've found uh, almost everywhere in, this, in, the, in our galaxy, specifically here, planets like, for example, this. I'm going to show you an exoplanet here called um, Corot 7. It's right here. Now, Corot 7 is the first Ktonian planet that we've discovered. Basically, it's a planet that used to be a gas giant and is no longer a gas giant. Because what happened to it is that when it had hydrogen, when it had hydrogen, all of it got evaporated by the proximity to its parent star. And you can see the same thing happening to Corot 7c here. It will at some point in the future become a Ktonian planet as well. Basically, all of this gas is going to evaporate and expose the inner core, which is going to be relatively dense and probably have a very large amount of both silicates and metals on the inside. And we know that this particular planet is uh, less than 1 billion years old, so it doesn't really take very long for, for these gas giants to lose their atmosphere. Now, these particular objects are usually called either hot Jupiters or hot Neptunes, depending on their mass. And uh, in the case of Corot 7b, it was very likely was a hot Jupiter. It was very, very, very massive. Uh, but if we actually look at, oh, look at this beautiful tail, tail too. This is gorgeous. Um, but yeah, in the case of Jupiter, if it ever was this, it would have been very likely to be uh, something called a hot Neptune. Because if you actually look at um, Neptune, its inner core is not very big. Its inner core is only about several masses of Earth, uh, whereas for Saturn and Jupiter, the inner core is up to six to seven times of Earth. So Mercury is not very massive. So if it was ever a gas giant, it was probably a very smaller sort of gas giant. And so to test this hypothesis, what I'm going to do is the following. 
I'm going to go ahead and add a few masses to Mercury. So let's just say it's going to be 20 masses of Earth, which is usually a typical size of um, a hot Neptune. And here what we're going to do is basically change this into a hydrogen based uh, planet. So here most of the material is going to be hydrogen with just a little bit of iron and silicates on the inside, just like it had originally. So basically a huge gas giant with a little core of uh, silicates and iron, kind of similar to what uh, Neptune and Uranus are. And we're going to have it orbit around the sun in its uh, actual location for let's just say 100 years. And what we're going to measure here is this. We're going to measure the total mass that it experiences over the 100 year period and then basically using math try to find out if it's possible for it to lose essentially all of its hydrogen which is about 20 masses of earth over a billion years now if it is possible then maybe just maybe a long time ago specifically we're talking about 4.5 billion years ago mercury was actually some kind of a atmosphere planet with possibly um, a structure similar to a hot Neptune or possibly hot Jupiter, where it basically had a very large hydrogen atmosphere that pr uh, protected it from collisions early on, and which is why we don't really have as many collisions on it as we do on the moon. But then if it doesn't actually lose as much atmosphere, then maybe it wasn't. So let's test this hypothesis, and it's a very, very simple test. So just count the years here. We're going to go to about 2117, and what we are looking at is of course the total um where is it total mass loss and we're going to change this to earths so let's see how many earths is going to lose in this period starting now so i'm going to just zoom in on the sun here just so that we don't have to wobble too much and here we go now as you can see as it's orbiting around the sun its orbit is actually relatively stable and it doesn't really affect venus either because venus is a relatively large planet so it doesn't really get much gravitational effects from it so this really is not a true jupiter that would actually affect everyone or everything in in this sort of vicinity uh so gra gravitation wise or i guess mass wise it is possible that maybe it was a jupiter but let's just find out if it's possible mass wise and here we go 2117, 2118. Okay, I think we went a little bit over 10, but that's okay. Let's look at the total mass loss. So it's about 6.61 times 10 to the, I think it's negative uh, 7. Yeah, times 10 to the negative 7. Uh, Earth's lost in total over 100 year period. So what we have to do now is um, extrapolate how much would this be after basically a billion years and to do that essentially what we're doing is multiplying this number by about what is it 10 million yes i think it's 10 million and if you do that what you'll get is the value of about 0.6 or i guess 0.7 earths now that is very very little we have 20 earths to lose but after a billion years we're only going to lose like not even one earth so there's a problem with that hypothesis. It might be that Mercury is currently way too far away from the sun to actually lose a significant amount of um, atmosphere. So it's very likely that maybe it wasn't a hot Jupiter or a hot, hot Neptune. Maybe it was just a little bit too far away. Unless, of course, we also consider the so-called migration or planetary migration theory, where we actually are almost positive that Neptune and Uranus moved from the inner solar system to the outer solar system. And so what if that actually happened to Mercury as well when it was a gas giant? What if it was actually much closer? So let's see what happens if we move it, to, uh, let, I don't know, let's just say from 0.371 astronomical units where it currently is to a distance of about 0.05 astronomical units much 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 closer and then we're going to assume that it then migrated to the outskirts now suddenly look at that it's losing all of this gas dramatically fast and even though it actually has a little bit of magnetosphere which unfortunately you don't see here because it's actually very small um, it is still losing a dramatic amount of gas and we're talking about a value of about, uh, in terms of Earth's, it's about 1% of Earth per year. And so if this was sort of the reality here, if, if we actually run this again, and we're going to go 100 more years, so let's just go to uh, the year 2218. 
or actually I don't even have to go that far because within a year I lost about 2% of Earth, which implies that within a billion years I'm going to lose about 20 million year Earths. So I'm going to lose about 20 million Earths. So that's that's actually quite significant, which means that if it was this much closer, it would be very, very likely that it would have actually lost all of this hydrogen and then essentially become the naked core, also known as Actonian planet. This, this is what we actually uh, call these particular planets that have be, used to be uh, gas giants or some kind of planets with very thick atmosphere and then with time basically became something else. So let's just lower the temperature a little bit and see what this new Mercury looks like. And look at the scorched surface here. Absolutely gorgeous, but also kind of scary. So I guess what uh, this sort of simulation suggests to me and probably should suggest to you as well is that if ever Mercury was a gas giant, it probably migrated from the inside the solar system to the outside where it is right now. However, if it wasn't a gas giant, we still have no real explanation for why it's so dense compared to other planets and compared to other objects in the solar system, and also why its surface seems to be a little bit younger than the moon. Or at least crater-wise, it doesn't seem to have as many craters as the moon, even though it's technically more massive and also larger in size. So if you compare them, moon seems to have more craters. Why? I don't know. Do you? If you do, please post it in the comments below. Maybe we can win a Nobel Prize together. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, guys. I really appreciate all your support. I'll see you in the next video where we're going to explore something completely different. If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to share this and don't forget to like this as well and possibly even consider supporting this channel on Patreon. I love you guys so much. Thank you for all your support. Game you later and as always, bye-bye. And meanwhile, what I'm gonna do is... Make this more fair for the moon and add some more creators because moon needs less creators and mercury needs more. Here we go. Take that science. Now explain that. This is called late, late, late heavy bombardment. We're adding more creators because science. And here we go on the new surface of mercury that has a little bit more creators, including some big ones. Perfect.